The first tax response sack is just around the corner, so let's go through the top things you can do to jump your grades up a band. We'll start with how to pass or how to get to C level, then how to get from C's to B's, how to get from B's to A's, and finally, what you should be looking for if you want to get 100% and ultimately a 45 plus score at the end of the year. First up, how to start passing. This list shouldn't surprise you, but there are a few key things to note. Firstly, make sure you write at least 500 words. Secondly, make sure it's on topic and you reference the text at least a little bit. And thirdly, read the text beforehand so you know what's going on. Very few students actually fail English in the sense that they regularly get grades of less than 50%. Of those that I've seen, however, it mostly seems to be an issue with word count. The writing might be okay, but usually there just isn't enough for the teacher to mark. The second biggest issue is not knowing what the text is about. If you're just trying to pass this sec, my recommendation to you is to read the book and make sure you write at least a page and a half in your response. Also, make sure your writing is on the same topic as the prompt. Next up, if you're trying to go from C's to B's. Firstly, make sure your essay is full length, 800 to 1000 words. If you want to be, you have to be hitting the word count. Secondly, analyze at least two quotes per body paragraph and ideally three. If you're doing a film, analyze at least one film technique per body paragraph. These rules aren't hard and fast in the sense that you'll be graded against them in a rubric. However, B essays include a solid amount of evidence, so these are a good metric to aim for. Note, for these quotes to count, you actually have to analyze them. Just quoting words from the text without further reference to them doesn't add to your piece. Thirdly, reference the author and their intent when writing in the linking sentence. As a bonus, you can also put author intent in the topic sentence. This gives you bonus analysis points. And finally, make sure you are analyzing the text rather than retelling it. Don't bother explaining the context of the examples you're using. If a sentence doesn't answer one of the following questions, it's not analysis. Firstly, what does this tell us about the inner thoughts, feelings, and motivations of this character? And secondly, what does this tell us about the author's perspective on the world? How do they think people behave in real life? What are they suggesting we should do in our own lives or be aware of as the audience? As bonus, you can also add, how does it make the audience feel or how does it change our interpretation of the text? This is more used to analyze poetic techniques or elements of a film. It's less relevant for novels and short stories. B essays are the basic standard for an English essay, so they need to be the expected length, on topic, and referencing the text. Fortunately, with enough work, anyone can get a B. An A essay is where you really have to start paying attention, however, because small things that wouldn't change much in your mark in the C to B range will bring you down here. How to go from a B to an A. Firstly, no more than one to two errors in word choice, spelling, grammar, or punctuation per body paragraph. We want to see clear expression, that your writing makes sense, no words are incorrectly used, and as a bonus, it reads nicely. Note, lots of people are shocked to learn that you're actually penalized for poor expression in English. This isn't because spelling and grammar are directly part of the curriculum. In fact, it's because lack of these things actually makes a piece quite hard to read. If your writing is hard to read for the assessor, it's going to be difficult to score top grades. Put another way, you can score 10 out of 10 with a spelling error or two written under time pressure, but they mustn't impair readability, i.e. the piece as a whole must still read clearly and make good sense. Secondly, every bit of evidence you use is followed with either character analysis or author intent analysis as before. After you add your quote, film technique, symbol, or other detail, answer one of the following questions. What does this tell us about the character's inner thoughts, feelings, or motivations? And what does this tell us about the author or director's perspective on the world? What's the message about this theme? Or what do they want to make the audience take away and remember? Thirdly, evidence you use has to directly relate back to the prompt. You can't just be quoting and analyzing random things. You have to be able to tie each bit of evidence you use back to the topic. Fourthly, analysis is specific. If your paragraph is about Macbeth's ambition, don't analyze each quote the same way. This shows that Macbeth is ambitious, which causes things to go wrong for him. Da, da, da. 
Instead, look at each quote individually. What is it that this quote tells us about the theme specifically, which is different from other quotes? For example, one quote about wanting money might tell us that the character is ambitious because they have material aims and care about superficial metrics of success. A quote about someone's parents not supporting them might tell us that the character is driven by insecurity. Both quotes are about ambition, but each has a different flavor. Lastly, you need consistent reference to the author's intentions. Author intent should feature in your linking sentences once or twice throughout your body paragraph and also possibly in the topic sentence. Your piece should be focused not on what we learn about the characters, but why the author depicted them this way. What are they trying to say about these types of personalities and interactions in real life? Finally, how to get that elusive 10 out of 10 score. The tips in the B to A section will get you safely to an 80 plus grade range. Those on specificity of analysis and reference to the author's intent will get you closer to 85 to 90%. However, if you really want to hit a top score, you'll need to do a little more. Firstly, you need to show really deep thought about the text and a response that's expertly tailored to the prompt. You need to have very clear ideas on what the book or movie is about. You need to know the character's psychology inside out and be able to explain these complex ideas you have simply and clearly. Additionally, your response has to be tied to the specific question at all times. Secondly, no factual errors or question about the plot or characters. Sprinkling examples and quotes throughout is another thing you can do. While adding quotes without analysis at lower levels won't gain you points, it will help you stand out at the upper levels. If you already have a fair bit of analysis in your paragraph, replacing some of your own words with quotes from the text where they fit neatly will help show really excellent textual knowledge. Finally, beautiful writing. Top responses are characterized by their readability and also high quality prose. The best way to improve in this is to read a lot of 10 out of 10 responses and analysis of the text that you're studying in class. Then take out any words or phrases that you like and save them in a list. When you write, actively practice incorporating these new words and structures correctly until you're comfortable using them. These are the things that really separate 10 out of 10 responses from 9 out of 10 ones. Hopefully this video gave you some insight into what puts an essay in a certain grade range and some pointers for how to get to the next one. Good luck with your sack. Thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you would like more content like this, please hit subscribe. And if you found this valuable, please hit that like button or send to someone else you think could use this. Your shares help us grow our audience so we can help more students for free. Happy studying!